to the South Burbs Hitmen Podcast with your hosts, Joe Mandel, Stephen Zim Zimmerman, and Vinny Parisi. We're bringing you the White Sox coverage you need from the perspective of true Southsiders. Grab your Comiskey dog with an ice cold beer and meet us in section 155. Everyone get on your feet for your South Burbs Hitmen! That ball hit deep. Way back. You can put it on the board. Yes. Jimenez in the air. Left field. He's your hero tonight. Thanks, Cubs. Over the head of Jenks. Uribe charges throws. Out. And the White Sox have won the World Series. Alexei. What is going on, everybody, and welcome to South Burbs Hitmen, where we bring you White Sox conversation all season long, and that season is about to start coming up on Thursday afternoon. I'm one of your hosts, Joe Mandel, and I'm joined, as always, by my White Sox brothers in arms. I'm talking about Vinny Parisi and Steven Zim Zimmerman, who couldn't be with us tonight, but did send in a video that we will play in a little bit. But Vincenzo, how are you, my friend? I am doing very good, Joe. It was good to get in for the last couple minutes on our last episode. And today I'm coming with you guys from the beginning. That's how it should be for 99.9 the rest of the season. I'm excited to be here. It's a brand new season upon us. Um, You know, there are mixed expectations, well, low expectations for the White Sox this season. But (laughs) that's not going to stop us. I'm very much looking forward to it. I can't wait. And it's different than the last two years. The last two years, they kind of stunk, and I wasn't expecting it. This year, we are expecting it, so maybe they'll surprise us. I don't know. It, uh, going in with a different mindset, though, it'll make whatever they have in store a lot more easy, easy to deal with. So I'm actually very excited for White Sox yeah. baseball. You know, I think it's a fresh slate, right? Start of the season, no matter what. You know, for at least two weeks, they'll be enjoyable to watch. Like, it's almost... A given. Although last week you could argue the start of the se- or last season, the start of the season was unwatchable. It was pretty brutal. But I'm hoping it's not quite that bad. But usually you have a fresh feeling. You're excited to watch baseball, which I am. I got my MLB ticket, which I hopefully I actually use most of the season. <laughs> but that's a whole other story. Um, but I'm looking forward to it, Vin. And uh, our buddy Steven Zim Zimmerman couldn't be with us on the show tonight, but he was kind enough to send us a little video kind of talking about all that good stuff and what he's looking forward to this season, his predictions, which we'll get our predictions going, you know, after we get Zims and kind of talk through it and let the chat get involved. But why not? Let's let's take a look at what our buddy Zim had to say, Vin, because you know Zim. He's um he's Zim. So on that note, and the worst intro yeah. ever, <laughs> you can't argue that he's definitely Zim. I'm going to be getting messages like, what are you talking about, dude? <laughs> what? <laughs> anyway, uh, Steven Zim Zimmerman gave us his predictions for the season. Let's take a look. Vindy and I will break it down afterwards. Here you go, Zim. What's up, buddy? What's up, Sox fans? It's your guy, Steven Zim Zimmerman here. I know I'm not live with you tonight, but... You know, I love to talk, so I had to send Joe this video. Hopefully, Vinny and Joe have some things to expound on here. Uh, so with that, let's just start right at the top. Season record, I don't think it's going to be a great season for our Sox. I don't think anybody is really expecting them to be world beaters or even this competitive team that we're being sold to believe. Chris Getz seems to think this is not a rebuilding year, and unfortunately, it really is. So I would say I expect this team to probably lose 90 to 100 games. I really think that 60 to 70 wins is a good ceiling. I think that 80 wins means that they've overachieved. I don't think playoffs are even a thought for this squad. Um, 
I, I don't think that's really a bold prediction of any kind right there. Um, as far as some bold predictions, maybe, uh, players to keep an eye on, in my opinion, this season are Nicky Lopez, the second baseman. He could potentially bring some stability to a position that's really been in flux for the last several years for the Sox. Um, you know, just to move it over to the shortstop position where now it's going to be in flux until Wilson Montgomery is ready to come up. Probably another year or two before that happens. So I think Nicky Lopez, excuse me, Nicky Lopez is going to bring some stability to the middle of that infield, as well as Dominic Fletcher, I think is going to start to anchor down that right field position. He's been pretty good so far in his limited experience with Arizona. He comes over to the White Sox now and really has an opportunity to become an everyday player for them. He's not going to be a star by any means, but if he can be a 260 hitter with 14 home runs and 60 RBIs, like that's what all you need out of your right fielder and something that the White Sox have sorely been lacking for a long time. So that's the, that's my two positional guys. As far as uh, in the bullpen slash starting rotation, as far as the pitchers go, um, Michael Kopech coming out of the bullpen, I think that's a great spot. I really do. I think there's a possibility he even develops into a closer for them. Um, that might be the boldest take of all right there, but... Michael Kopech has the stuff, and when he's only working for two to three innings at a time max, I mean, if you only need him for one inning and his mind is there, then he's lights out, and that's all there is to it. So I really think that's a great move. Another guy that I think is worth keeping an eye on is Nick Nestrini, is a really good player to keep an eye on. Nick Nestrini came over to the White Sox in that deal with Lance Lynn uh, to the Dodgers, last year and he has been lights out since coming to the way uh his worst outing was his most recent one i really think that nick nestrini could be a uh contributor for this team sooner rather than later potentially even on the opening day roster i know that would be a real stretch but i don't think it's impossible if you want a big, bold prediction for this season, I would say that Luis Robert probably gets traded. He is too valuable to be on a team that lacks this much talent. They have really, really been trying to rebuild their farm system, and he is like the final piece, I feel, that could really get them something huge in return. Yeah, it would suck, but I think it could help this team build towards the next greatest thing. Have a great night, everyone. Joe, Vinny, let's uh, let's have another great season. And oh, socks, I guess that's about all I got. Back to you guys. That's all, folks. Thanks, Zim. <laughs> Thanks, Zim. Love that. Love the optimism. No, I'm kidding. He he nailed it. He, I mean, a lot of the things he said, I'm sitting here going, "Yep, couldn't agree more." Yep, yep. Uh, I really like what he said about Nastrini. Um. I could see him being a contributor for the team this season. I don't from the opening day. That'd be cool. Um, I was just looking just now to make sure we weren't. I wasn't talking out of my butt, and he was still with them. But yeah, he is. And you know, if he's there by the opening day, which is Thursday, I mean, that'd be cool. Why not give these guys an opportunity? Um, you moved out Michael Kopech from the starting rotation. You don't have anybody that was there from last year in terms of Clevenger, Cease. Lynn, Giolito, none of these guys yeah. are there. And, you know, the fifth was Kopech, and he's in the bullpen now. Um, Garrett Crochet's up in the rotation. What if it's just a bunch of young guys who, you know, sky's the limit for them? We'll see what happens. I, I like that pick by him. Most of what he said is pretty much in line with what I think, too. Let me ask you this, Vin. Do you feel like do you agree with Zim in the fact that you think Robert will be traded this year? Now, that's a tough one. He's going to be a Boris client, so it's definitely a possibility. Um, I think the White Sox get a lot for him if he stays healthy and has another good year. Um, I don't believe if they put him on the trade block right now, they would get the haul that people think because he does have a large injury history and he has about five months of MLB playing time where you would consider him super elite. Um, I, I'm sure other teams would say they need to see more than that. Um, you know, do I know he could hit 40 bombs on a real and have 120 RBIs on a real good team? Yeah, if he stays sure. healthy, he stayed healthy last year. 
can he do it again? I hate being that, well, can you do it again kind of guy because when people say it in hockey, it kind of annoys me. Like a guy scores 40 goals. I'm like, what makes you think he can't do that again? And normally they do it again. He's got but, the talent, but yeah, yeah, I agree with you. He doesn't have the track record. Yeah, exactly. And I, you know, if a hockey player got injured all the time and he randomly scored forty, I'd be like, okay, I'd like to see him do it again. Same thing in baseball here with Robert. Like, you've had a lot of injuries. I'd like to see you do it again. So I, I would keep him until he proves that he's worth the type of haul that I absolutely, or until other teams think he's worth the type of haul that White Sox fans know he's worth because yeah. of that fact. So. You know, if it happened, it wouldn't shock me at all. If it didn't happen, it wouldn't shock me at all. I do agree it sucks seeing him wasted on a team like this. Um, if he were on a team, you know, I'm not sure a team like the Dodgers are going to be adding too much anymore lately. But, like, if he went to a team like the Astros, for example, or if he went to the Yankees, and all of a sudden you got Judge, Soto, and Robert in the outfield, like that'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Like, you know, or if he goes to, let's say the Red Sox have a surprisingly good start and they're looking for a big bat to go in the middle of their lineup. Of course, they would like a guy like Luis Robert Jr. Baltimore would love a big hitter like Luis Robert Jr. in the middle of their lineup. Toronto. And the defender. Watch this. Yeah. I mean, he's a world class center fielder. Um, there are, you could probably count on your hand the number of players in the American League that are better at defending the position of center field better than Luis Robert Jr. Um, so the fact that he hits as well as he does makes him extra valuable. Sure. Um, I do believe if he stays healthy for a full year, he's considered an upper echelon player. Um, I believe when I was looking at the fantasy rankings a couple days ago, he was like in the top 20. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, people think the world of this guy, he's unreal. And you know, do I think the White Sox lineup could end up scoring more runs this season than people expect? 100%. I absolutely was looking at the lineup the other day, and I'm like, yeah, it's possible, right? They have Benintendi. They have Moncada. These guys don't have the you know, greatest track record with the White Sox. But, you know, Luis Robert Jr., with all the you know talent that he has, it wouldn't shock me if he goes out and has you know a real good season. Yeah, I, I think he's going to have a dynamite season as long as he stays healthy. <clears throat> you know, that's always the question. Listen, I mean, I'll, in the years where everything could go wrong, it does go wrong. Maybe this is the year where, you know, we've got no expectations. Maybe everything that can go right will go right. I'm not going to be the optimist that says they're going to win 90 games. Yeah, I, of course. We'll get to our prediction in a little bit, but – uh, I'll go out on a limb before I give the prediction later. I'll say they're going to win more games than they did last year. I feel it. I hope. Just because of the improved defense. Maybe it's the early season optimism in me then, but I'm not saying that they're going to be amazing. I just feel like they're going to be more competitive. For sure. I, I think they're going to play better defensively too. They're better up the middle. Now, can those guys who they added as defensive replacements hit? You know, those are the guys in the lower end of the lineup that I think could keep them from scoring the runs I was talking about. Yeah. So, you know, if Benintendi has another down year and Mankata acts like Mankata does, where for three weeks he looks real hot and three weeks he looks like, you know, batting 150 or whatever it is, yeah. uh, then, you know, they'll probably just be the same inconsistent offense that they've been for the last two years. Um, I'm, I'm not – you know, totally optimistic. So if they have more wins than last year, it's not even like saying having more wins than last year. It doesn't really mean anything all that much. Point. If they won 65 games, that's an atrocious season, but it's more wins than they had last year. Right. I mean, it's not, it's not saying a lot. Um, well, real quick, while we're talking about guys that are going in and out of the lineup, I mean, the Sox didn't make an announcement today. They already have someone on the IL. Stassi got put on the IL. Uh, Tende and Corey Lee got called up in his place. So uh, just, interesting that that the season hasn't even started yet and and here we are i know they're looking for the long term in terms of this season but uh yeah and you know Corey lee's the guy they called up in his place you know i'm not sure he's gonna just come up and be this great player i know he's a top prospect but you know we've seen how that worked out in the past um i don't know the injury bug always does seem to come get the white Sox, but you know, and we've already seen Eloy kind of deal with stuff already. People are saying, like, of course, Eloy, he's getting hurt already. Like, that's just the way it is for the White Sox. So, well, they're also being extra precautious. You know, top of the season, you just got to, you know, especially with the way he, the history he has, don't 
take everything, you know, give him a breather. I mean, he injured himself in AAA games before. I mean, that's when he got when they when they wore the red glove when they acted like he was dead. Remember? Yeah, that kind of started the whole White Sox heaven thing. Remember that? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Friend of the show. Uh, uh, why am I drawing a blank? Keelan. Keelan. Yes. Yeah, yeah Keelan was great. And you know what? That goes to show. Um, that goes to show that it goes even back to when they were a good team because yeah. that White Sox heaven graphic ended up being loaded with um, lots of players. So, you know, the injury bug goes all the way back. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, though. One thing we got so the, the best part about this, Alvin, is like having no expectations just kind of brings you into a new headspace. Mm hmm. You know, I, I think part of the reason last year sucked so bad is because we had all these sky high expectations. You know, they brought in Pedro. You know, I don't know. The chat room is is very optimistic about everything. So, yeah, for sure. Uh, I'm looking at the chat room right now, and it's just loaded with incredibly um, fun content. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, I mean, I'm just happy there's so many people tuned in. I mean, a viewer's a viewer, so appreciate your support. No, I'm irrelevant. I don't get people to watch. I know what I was saying is like, hey, it's it's another viewer on our list. So I mean, we'll we'll take anyone that wants to tune in with us, right, Vin? Absolutely. Absolutely. And you know, all these people that like to yep, 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 they wouldn't last two minutes against me. So it's totally cool. <laughs> One of these days, right, Ben? Yeah, absolutely. Um, Joe, let's get to our predictions. <laughs> yeah, man. Why the why the why the f not? Do you want to start with like? Uh, I'm just gonna put you on the spot because we're just we're making this more of an informal thing today because sure. we're not doing the segments and all that because we don't have much to talk about other than you know irrelevant spring games. So, who who is your biggest disappointment of the 2024 season for the White Sox? The biggest disappointment, I think a lot of people are going to come in thinking that, you know, a lot of people are going to come in thinking that um, Luis Robert Jr. is going to put up these monster numbers again. And I just think the White Sox are going to be so bad that even if he has like a good year, it's not going to be quite like last year. Mm -hmm. People are going to consider it a disappointment. I'm very, very worried about what happens to Luis Robert Jr.'s production this season. Like, very worried about it. it it's it's very relevant. There's a lot of there's not as many pieces around him. You know, it he if, if he is the player we think he is, it doesn't matter. But at the end of the day, I'm with you. Uh, he's got to prove it this year. It might be tough with the pieces around him. But either way, I'd like that call as the biggest disappointment. Uh, and this might be a hot take for people because I, I'm a big fan of this guy. For my biggest disappointment, and I think you might not even like my pick here, Vin, I, I think Garrett Crochet is going to be the biggest disappointment for the 2024 White Sox. This is a guy who's coming back from injury. He's rehabbed himself. He's never been that starter since what is college ball, right? He came and he was a from the second they brought him in, he's been he was throwing out of the pen. And now all of a sudden they're throwing him into a starter role, which I'm not fully convinced that he can throw more than five innings right now, Vin. I don't even know if he goes five on opening day. I'd say he goes like four if we're lucky. Uh, I just have a bad feeling about crochet. I hope I'm wrong. I know he has the talent, I know he has the arm. He just doesn't have the experience as a starting pitcher. So I'm really worried that he's going to be shelled like all year. I couldn't agree with you more. Do you know the last team Crochet faced or went four innings? Who was the opponent? Oh, geez. I want to say it was, was it the Oakland A's? Um, no. I really don't know. Is there a team? Is there a question? It was the Florida Gators. Okay, so it's a trick question. <laughs> that is the last team that Garrett Crochet threw more than four innings against. 
So if he hasn't made a, co- a start in the MLB since college. And, you know, in a game that counts, he's a couple spring training starts now. But a game that counts, no starts, all out of the bullpen. It was an odd transition to MLB for Garrett Crochet because of the fact that COVID was going on during his um, rise. He was drafted in 2020. And he was a first round pick, starter, stud, great. And he college. came right into the pen from being drafted, there right? There was it was either taxi squad or at at the Boomer Stadium, or it was MLB. There was no triple A, there was no double A. Um, so they ended up moving him in and they brought him in. They needed extra pitching going into the postseason. It was odd that they didn't start him in that third playoff game um against the A's, but he did pitch in that game and he pitched okay. Um, by the time he came in, they were kind of already out of it. Carlos Rodon didn't have a really good start. Um, that was kind of his last bad start before turning it around with the White Sox the following year. Um, but it, it just is a very untraditional rise to the league. And I do think that kind of harmed his development. There was the injury risk. They kind of thought he was going to need Tommy after that season. He pitched all of 2021 and was pretty good. But then coming into 2022, it was just shot right away during spring training. And he comes in 2023, halfway through the year or whatever, maybe a little longer than halfway through the year. And, you know, there were times where he was good. He's got great stuff. Um, It's a very hard on the body um, release. Like, I don't even like wind up. His wind up is very challenging for the body. So, is he, he throwing three digits right now? Is yeah, he, yeah, he, yeah. Oh, yeah. He's got the velocity way up. I think that's a problem, though. It could be. It very well could be for a starter. Because remember what Kopech came up? Yep. Yep. Absolutely. That's what happened. To it's, him. Hard, it's hard to be a starter with that kind of velocity. So, you know, because that's meant for like one inning a day, two innings a day. So, I, I Joe, you brought up five innings on opening day. I, I don't think he can throw that. I don't think he makes it four. If he's in the third inning, I'll be stunned. It's a bullpen we, game. And we talked about this on Crosstown, Vin, but when we talked about when I made the prediction about it, I think he's gonna be the opening day starter. I don't think it's got anything to do with him being like the best, most prepared starter. He had a great spring. I'm not yes. taking that away from him. Great. But like he's literally the only name that these White Sox play fans know. I mean, outside of Kopech, and they're moving him to the bullpen. Yeah, I mean, people, baseball fans, might know what's his name coming back from Japan um, oh, from the Fetty. Nationals, Fetty or Feedy, however you say it. But Fettini. I mean, yeah, it's a bunch of guys that maybe White Sox fans hadn't known. They 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 might get rid of uh, Tuki Tusain. He was put on waivers. Yeah, I saw that. So, you know, he was a guy that kind of came up, had an up and down year last year, but there were times where he made a name for himself. So, you know, as PZ points out in the chat, they drew straws. That's probably, you know, it's a funny joke, but it does seem that way. I mean, Garrett Crochet earned the opening day start. I just don't think he's much more than a opener for the Whites. It's crazy. A MLB team. I just don't understand opener. why immediately – you put your bullpen into like a bullpen day, but, but the only reason being is because I believe, do they have an off day on Friday? I think they might. Yeah. Is it yeah. It's Thursday? They're off Friday, then Saturday, Sunday. Yeah. Now if there's rain, that that's always the thing. There's a reason that there's the off day um, in cold slash open air climates because they want to have a day des- designated to get opening day in. Most teams in cold climate places have two possible days to have an opening day. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's interesting. Old. I mean, it could it could work out, but we all know the weather in the Chicagoland area. I mean, we had snow last week. We're getting heavy rain, I think, tomorrow. So, yeah, weird. I'm looking. I'm looking now. It's actually probably going to rain pretty hard tonight here in the Chicagoland area. Thursday's looking clear though, and in the mid 50s. So they'll probably they'll get the game in. But I just – I don't think from a pure baseball point of view that Garrett Crochet gets – I think he does two innings. Uh, like if he gets into the third, bravo, bravo. Watch, watch Crochet throw a complete game. That'd be sick. That'd be sick. That would be absolutely sick. I mean that would pull prove bull right. I don't know shit about baseball. So, you know, maybe he will go out there and throw nine full innings. I mean, again, I don't think anyone's expecting him to do that. But because that, maybe he will. Yeah. 
and you know, Garrett Crochet is an MLB pitcher. I think he's proven that. Um, has he proven he's an MLB? And I, and, yeah. and I don't think neither of us are are, are crapping on Garrett Crochet. No, I love just, Crochet. I, I just feel like he's gonna, he's got the most potential to be the biggest disappointment for me because I think it's because we know what he's capable of. And he's getting so much weight put on his shoulders, you know? And for one other thing I know about Garrett Crochet, he's the nicest guy of all time. He is just, and I know people don't like hearing that because, you know, it, it makes it seem like I'm making an excuse if he stinks. I'm not. If he stinks, I'll come on here and say he stinks. But I, he is one of the, like, sweetest people you'll ever meet. He's just kind to everybody he comes in contact with. So he's an easy guy to root for. So I hope I hope he does go out there and give them what they at least need. Whatever they're expecting from him on opening day, if they tell him, hey, we need two out of you, I'm game for it. I, I'm, I'm here for it. I'm excited about it. Uh, maybe, maybe people are all just assuming Kopech is going to be a closer, but really he comes in the third inning and pitches four. Well, didn't, didn't Pedro come out and say some nonsense today about how he doesn't knows closer who's going to use it it's not going to be all the time thing i saw your article i wanted to believe that pedro grafal was just like a fall guy last year with all the drama that was going on yeah and you know coming in replacing tony it's not easy but this guy he's doing it again i i thought i honestly didn't know if he'd do this all again he's doing it again his media interactions are just brutal it's some of the worst I've ever seen. Like I didn't always wonder, agree. Dude. I didn't always agree with Tony. I hardly ever agreed with him, but he came out there and he explained what he was doing with a valid argument every single time. Pedro Grafal goes to the media after and sounds like a moron. It makes me wonder if Pedro's taken media training at all, or if they just he's just like, nah, I don't got time for that. Yeah, it wouldn't shock me if he hasn't. Cause he just goes out there and every, every little thing he does, he like seems to explain it the wrong way. I, I concur. Pedro's pen is going to be so fun this year. Isn't it Ben? Oh yeah. We're going to crap all over him. I have a feeling at a certain point, we're just going to discontinue the segment, but yeah, honestly, honestly, it wouldn't shock me at all. Bumbling, fumbling, stumbling. Love that. All right. What's the, what's the next prediction we're looking at Joe? All right, so next one we're going to do is biggest surprise. So we had biggest disappointment. Now we're going to biggest surprise. Okay. I have a feeling that I kind of alluded to it already, and maybe I'll be way wrong, but I guess maybe I'll be way wrong for all of these. Because it's, it, I think it's even harder to predict how bad a bad team is going to be than how good a good team is going to be. I agree. Um, it wouldn't shock me if Andrew Benintendi has a bounce back season. He has been a good pro throughout his MLB career wherever he went, and it was his first year with the White Sox as a free agent, and you know a lot of money, highest contract in team history. There were expectations for the team as a whole to have a bounce back year. Uh, Tim Anderson started the year off as the lead off man. Benintendi's number Riddle. two, then he starts off, he gets hurt, Benintendi's all of a sudden the leadoff guy. He will have this year a defined role in a locker room that he's used to, in a city that he's used to, on a team that he's used to, and the expectations of him are probably known. You're, you're not getting more than seven or eight home runs from him in a season, um, but you probably will get you know, some, some better – better all around play from Ben He can't be in bad in the outfield, that bad in the outfield again. Um, you know, he, he's supposed to be known. He's been a gold glove caliber guy in the past. Yeah. And last year he was straight up brutal. So he can't be that bad again. He probably knows the outfield a little bit better. I'm sure there are a lot of things he worked on this off season and it wouldn't shock me at all. If Ben and has a little bit of a bounce back year this year, I'm not saying he's going to be Red Sox Ben but you know, if we could get Royals Ben uh, you I know, love it. It would be pretty, pretty sweet. And I love PZ's prediction. Mancata goes six weeks without an injury. Yeah. That's a little bit optimistic, but That's I like pretty it. optimistic. Uh, my prediction, Vin, I love yours, by the way, is that this guy, Aloy Jimenez, has a 40 home run season and is a huge, huge bounce back year. Um, 
And if he is at that level, he gets traded at the deadline. But uh, <laughs> I, I still think he has a nice bounce back year. Um, obviously, he's hurt, but hurt is subjective. So that's what I'm going to go with. Yeah, uh, Joe, I hope you're right. It's it's one of those things. I, I thought about naming Eloy in the last segment. but Your biggest disappointment? Yeah, only because every time I get my hopes up for Eloy, he has he he has let me down with injury year after year after year and listen i i would rather your oh. prediction here be right than mine well that's because part of my prediction is that i think he's going to stay healthy then and so that's it right he's going to hit bombs he already has it doesn't happen if he's not healthy let's let me make that clear yeah yeah that, i guess i guess if he's healthy i love your prediction and like i said i hope yours is more right than mine because if yours is more right than mine, the White Sox can win more games. Like I feel like sense. he's gonna be he's gonna be this year's Robert on the team. Okay. Like last year, he was like you could argue. I don't want to say he was the only good player, but he was the statistic guy that stood out on the team. Um, I'm not saying Robert's gonna have a bad year, but I feel like this could be the year that Aloy proves himself and maybe gets dealt to a contender, and we pick up some more prospects for the future. If there's anyone on the White Sox that I could see going to another team and just becoming like their full-time DH and being a borderline star, it would be Eloy because he does have like that raw power that is just so hard to find in in baseball players. But, I mean, I don't know. You know what, Joe? Get him out of here. Honestly, it, it's just getting to be a little – like you disagree with us, like that's one thing, but like get him out of here. I don't it's even it's, know it's getting a little hard to like stay focused, honestly. Yeah, I know. Um, I got to see what I can do, but like you're a joke. You would love to be what we're doing right now, and you're not. So get out. Yep. I mean, at the end of the day, I mean, let's be honest. I know that you you've been hanging out with us, watching the whole time. We're just getting the view. <laughs> You know, if you don't want to watch, you don't have to watch. But yeah, like you don't have to agree with us either. I'm stupid. Like I know, but like the insults, it's just that's taking it to a whole nother level. There's just no reason for that. Like I didn't insult you. Your name is the Italian Chicago Bull. What are you in freaking third grade? Like get out of here. It, like, I just don't jive with the insults. You want to talk ball? Let's talk ball. But calling us hacks, like we've interviewed people you wish you could interview. So get out. Yep. So appreciate that. We will continue the show without the comments. It's all good. Yeah. So I wish, I hope Eloy comes back and, you know, absolutely, absolutely demolishes baseballs. But he's got to stay healthy, like you said. Yeah, I think that's it at the end of the day, right? White Sox fans will have much happier season if Aloy and Robert stay healthy the entire time. If they stay healthy the entire time, like, could they combine for 70 home runs? They could. Will they? I doubt it. I th- I personally think it's one or the other stays healthy, and I just don't know why I get the feeling that it's Aloy, but... He's got his injury out of the way now. Hopefully that's a, you know, an, an omen for the future. What can I say? You know what I like about Eloy, though? He does seem to bring something to the locker room that nobody else can, you know, bring. He's got, like, a sense of optimism and happiness that, like, nobody else yeah. has. So, you know, he makes everybody around him better. So we'll see what happens. Yeah. So he's he's my – prediction there so you got ben attendee i'm gonna go with Aloy. so biggest surprise or biggest disappointment biggest surprise all right and now we get to get the now we get to the good stuff uh what do you say we go into to wins how many wins does this team have in them how many wins does this team have in them joe I think the White Sox are going to win 
64 games this season. That's a pretty good number, Vin. So 64, is that 64 and 98? Yes. Yeah. 64 and 98. That's my record for the White Sox this season. I'm not that far off from you, Vin. I a couple weeks ago I was thinking maybe they could hit 70. I'm gonna go with 68 wins. 68. So that would be 68 and is that 94? 68 and 94. Yeah. I'm writing these down, these predictions, so that I have them. So 68 and 94. What was yours? You were uh, 64 and 98. That's 64, bad. Damn. 64 and 98. I never, I never thought, you know, five years ago that we'd be getting to this, um, you know, putting in these types of predictions. But, I mean, they were just so bad last year, and they seemingly got worse, right? Like, what did they, what did they do to, quote, unquote, improve? You know, last year, the rotation was what it was for half the year, and then they traded them all off. This year, they're just starting the year with nothing. So... It's gonna be it's gonna be tough. It's gonna be real tough. Yeah, it's gonna be fun. <laughs> you know, we're we're gluttons for pain. I mean, it's a rebuilding year. We all know that. I think it's it's gonna be a long season, but I mean, hey, maybe we'll be pleasantly surprised. I mean, I'm not saying this is the 05 White Sox, but no one had expectations for them then. All right, let's shift gears for a second, Vin, and, and change change gears. We're not going to talk baseball. for. We'll get back to it in a little bit. So for all of our people in the house that don't want to not talk about baseball, just you can leave and come back, or don't come back. Acolyte, Vin, did you watch the trailer? I did. I absolutely did. Acolyte was I, – I, I really – I wasn't expecting it. I wasn't on my radar – and I know they like announced it and it was on the timeline like how many years ago, but it was like really cool to see that poster with the blood and the yeah. lightsaber. And then all of a sudden this trailer comes out and I was like, I was giddy for it. I was super excited. So I don't, what were your thoughts? Did you, did you like the trailer? I did. I did. It wasn't what I thought it was going to be, but I would say I liked it. So I saw the poster when it came out and I was hyped just like you were i'm not gonna lie vin i'm very underwhelmed with the trailer i feel like it looks like a b movie i i i know it's hard to judge off a 60 second teaser right yeah, of course i'm still gonna watch the shit out of it but like it looks awful uh, the wig the wig on the guy from squid game is laughable like you couldn't have done any better on that wig. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah, of course. I I did like the Jedi Wookiee, which is cool. And it makes me wonder, like, where does that lead? Well, I mean, in the books, there's some Jedi. I started reading the first one. Um, I might have it behind me, actually. I'm sure it's around here somewhere. I'll dig it out. Oh, here it is, right here. Oh, I couldn't have planned that up any better. Light of the Jedi. What do we got right there? Right here. Oh, yeah. Look at that. That makes sense. Okay. Okay. I see you. I couldn't have planned that better if I tried. No, that was perfect. Um, you know, if there's if there's a Wookiee Jedi, I'm here for it. And, you know, a Wookiee was such a big part of the story as a whole. So if one was able to yield the Force and be a big part of what's going on in that era of Star Wars. I'm excited to see it. Joe, didn't it look like Plo Koon was in the trailer too? Did you notice that? It was definitely a similar species. We'll go with that. But maybe. I mean, this is way, 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 way before that. But I don't know how old those guys can be and all that lore. But nonetheless, I still want to watch it, right? <laughs> I just... I think the trailer was poorly put together and I just have very bad feeling about it. No pun intended. I got a bad feeling about this. I'm going to watch it. I'm going to give it a chance. It feels like from another world. It doesn't feel 
You know what I mean? It doesn't feel Star Wars. Yeah, absolutely. Now, if they do the entire show and they like kind of you know show off a certain area of the Sith, I'm I'm pumped for that. Well, I know that's going to happen, and that I'm excited for. Like. Where does that girl who had the red lightsaber, where does she end up? Where does she fit in with Palpatine and all that kind of stuff? Like, I don't know. I'm not sure if that's something that we'll see. But if it is, I'm I'm mm-hmm. stoked for it. It makes me wonder if they're going to go like Knights of the Old Republic-ish. Or if they're going to go like Darth Plagueis, which is uh, Palpatine's master that he talks about in in uh, Revenge of the Sith. We're getting We're getting nerdy here. For all of our Star Wars fans that are also Sox fans, they've not announced a, 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 a Star Wars night yet, which I'm a little surprised about. But what I'm willing to bet, Vin, is the ballpark will likely do it in September when they need to sell tickets, like I mean, they did last year. We're already both probably going to Harry Potter, right? Like, or at least thinking I, about I it. I have the high, you I have, have your ticket. To Harry Potter, not yeah. That's a great it's, way to get people in. I've by been the way, Star if, Wars if there's night. people here that have not seen the giveaway, th- those scarves, check these out. They're sick. Yeah, they are sick. Um, they're very, very sick. But, yeah, hopefully the White Sox do do Star Wars night. I've been to Star Wars night more than once. And I've been to it when it's during the day, and I've been to it when it's at night. And both are awesome. Yeah, I, I, I enjoyed the day one just because I got to bring my daughter to her first game. That was fun, so... I got to find that picture of her and Darth Vader. Absolutely. Very, very cool. I'm excited for the Acolyte. It comes, what is it, June 4th? I believe so. Need a full need a full trailer. Need yes. more. Yes. So we'll probably get at least one more before then, right? Maybe two? Yeah, I think so. Oh, yeah. Because when you go see um, episode one in theaters... Oh, yes. There's like an extended look of it. Thing. After They're re-releasing for the 25th anniversary of Phantom Menace. You can see it in the theaters with a early... I, they're calling it an extended look at the Acolyte. I'm hoping it's good, man. I really do. Yeah. I just, the trailer... I, why put something out that's not like amazing? You know what I mean? Like, this is the first that people are seeing into this era. Like, this book, which if people haven't read it, it's fantastic. Light of the Jedi, this is the first book in the High Republic era, which is when this show takes place, right? There's a lot more books than this. As you know, Vin, there's 8 billion Star Wars books. So, I'm excited to see where that goes. Yeah, absolutely. I thought where I was going with that, but... It, it takes place in that, and and this is new for people, right? This is the first time Star Wars stepped outside of the trilogy. This is like the Phantom Menace is here, and this is way before it over here, right? Why put your first trailer out and make it anything but unbelievable? It was I just average more. to me. I couldn't agree more. They're kind of stepping outside their comfort zone in terms of the timeline that they were dealing with, but. I mean, you figure you figure the show's going to be good. You hope because everything that they've done um, with the shows so far has been mostly um, good. Thomas Cage says, Vinny, how much do you love the Acolyte on a scale of 9 to 10? <laughs> it's not out yet. <laughs> Th- Thomas how Gage, is, how did you like the trailer on a scale of one to ten? How about? Well, that? he said nine to ten. I don't know. I can't tell if Thomas Gage is being funny because Thomas Gage, Thomas Gage is a good dude, but he likes to crap on people for you know enjoying like nerdy things as an adult. It's his one bad take. He's he's, oh. he's fun though. I I I, I hated Thomas Thomas Gage at first, but you know we grown to become cool over the years. Um, but I th- kind of think he's roasting me right now. But I, it's a 10, oh. Thomas Gage. A 10. It's a 10. He, he tricked me, Vin. I didn't know it was a roast. I, it might not be. I, I don't. Maybe Thomas Gage likes Star Wars. But he does not love the whole MCU thing. Um, I, but Thomas Gage is good people. <laughs> I think that means it's a roast. But, um, <laughs> well, because he said I, on a scale of 9 to 10. Because he knows... He knows I'm gonna sit there and put it like right there at the top, even though like 
you know, I get all your points about it being underwhelming, uh, but I think it was just the fact that there was like a group of Jedi fighting against a group of Sith. Like, right. I'm pumped I, for I, it. I would, if I had to put the, if I had to rate the trailer on a scale of one ten, I'd give it a four. Okay. So like bad, but not like outstanding. Not abysmal. Yeah. Not abysmal and definitely not good, yes. but somewhere in between. Below average. Because it didn't really give us anything other than like say, hey, look at this cool stuff, but we're not going to tell you anything about it. It's like, that's fine, but like show me something more. I don't know. For Maybe sure. I'm just too big of a nerd. Thomas I'm Gage big... would probably say I'm too big of a nerd. Yeah, but... Thomas Gage thinks we're both way too big of nerds, but he likes hockey, so that, that makes him good people. Hey, Thomas Gage, that's a great segue. I'm very excited because I'm going to see a Golden Knights game in Vegas next week. Yeah, absolutely. Um, ha- have you been – you've been to a Blackhawks game. I have many times. Okay, many times. Is this I used first? to work at the UC during many of the Stanley Cup. Oh, you, you've know. told me that before. Is this your first NHL game away from the UC? I have seen a Vegas Golden Knights game once there. But yes, that was the first place I saw a game that wasn't Chicago. I was wow. there the the season after they opened they their inaugural season, the second season I saw a game there. That makes sense. Very good, very good. So, Joe, do we have any more White Sox predictions to go through? Like, yeah, I mean, we we can go back. I was just opening up the floor, opening up the mind, opening up the soul. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure. Um, yeah, I. When we before we get back to that, I, I hope you enjoy your trip to Vegas with the Golden Knights versus Canucks game. You're going to be seeing one of my favorite players in the league, Quinn Hughes. Um, his brother Jack and Luke are obviously on my favorite team, the New Jersey Devils. Um, I hope hope you enjoy what you're able to see over there because you got a lot of elite players on both of those teams. And Vegas is kind of slid a little bit. They're, t- they're um, the Canucks are tied with the Kings right now. I'm watching it, but. Um, People listening on audio later are going to be like, they already know what happened. But, sure. um, you know, that the Vegas kind of slid a little bit. It's either going to be them or the um, Kings in that third spot in the Pacific. And then, you know, one of them will fall in the wild card, but they should all make playoffs. Um, I believe Vegas is actually playing right now, though, against the St. Louis Blues. I, yep, they're, on, they're, up, they're up one nothing over the St. Louis Blues in the second intermission. So you're going to be seeing two really good, really fun teams loaded with talent, and I'm excited for you. Heck yeah, man. I mean, most thing I'm excited for is just to go back to Vegas with my wife. It's Hell yeah. first trip since the baby. Looking forward to getting away a little bit, you know? For sure, for sure. And, dude, you play some craps. You play craps? I've never played. Oh. I would like to learn, though. I would very much like to learn. You must come to a casino with me at some point. Yes. I'm very interested in learning because I know I like games like that where like that you have to be strategic. Obviously, there's a little luck involved, but yeah, I love. I know the concept of it and I love it, so I would like to learn. Like so much so, like my wife and I, we went with some friends of ours on like a little date night to the Four Winds Casino. I'm sure you've heard of it. Uh, it's on the Mich- It's in Michigan. It's on the- there's one on the border. There's one in New Buffalo. There's one in South Bend. We went into South Bend the other day dinner or whatever and we had like three hours away because you know we ate and then we went to the casino a little bit then we had to go home to the baby whatever <laughs> then i i put a hundred dollars on the craps table and i walked out with 300 <laughs> and That's- i was only at the craps table for like 45 minutes and that's with a hot hand like i could have had much more than that but like the guy finally crapped out i'm like all right cash me out please and how much like did I- you say you started with a hundred. You started with a hundred and walked away with that. Ah, nice. I made two hundred dollars in like forty-five minutes. Yeah, and I, and I know that. people are gonna say people in the chat are probably gonna be like, "Oh, that's nothing," but like, I mean, considering I was up and I was I was never down, right? It's like I had a lot of money on the table. Could have been a lot more. That's how you win. I if if I was in Las Vegas, I would have stayed at that table probably for like three hours, four hours. Oh yeah, easy. But I wasn't, and I had to go, and that's why i walked out with more money so anyway fun times i love playing craps i should teach you how to play craps you should you should highly recommend there's a phone app called it's called aw craps you can play (laughs) it on your phone (laughs) and like it's really easy to just lose yourself playing craps with fake money because it's you know probably a good way to learn yeah yeah i could i could definitely uh 
I could definitely get you up to speed with that. Anyway, I'm excited to go play craps. I'm excited to go to Vegas, see some great shows. Absinthe, Atomic Saloon. It's going to be great. Very good. Very good. We're excited for you. Yeah. Anyway, I was just filling content. Zim said he wasn't going to tune in, and here he is in the chat. I don't understand. You can learn to play craps on Neopets? Really? How detailed, Zim? Now I now I'm very interested in this. What, How what was, detailed? Was Neopets its own little toy, or was it, was it something it, on like Nintendo 3DS? I think, it, I, think I think it was like a version of the Tamagotchi, but it was yeah, like okay. more cool. Yeah. But but Zim, I gotta ask. Did it did it did it was it detailed? Did it have the pass line? Did it have the don't pass line? Could you make a comeback? Could you put a dollar yo? Could you, you know? I have to explain all. Could you back your odds? These are all things Vinny's like, what the heck is he talking about? Yeah, you're speaking another language. Center field nine. That's a crap reference. Space. When you roll a nine, I don't know why. The, I don't know how these nicknames come up. The dealer goes nine, nine, center field nine. Huh, because center field is eight. <laughs> That's funny. Oh, interesting. Call it crops. Huh. Wow. I'm suddenly interested in Neopets. Yeah, all of a sudden Joe's going back to, what was that, 2000, 2002? <laughs> yeah, I'm going to go back in time. There are you, you are you in are you into the chat for real now, Zim? Or are you are you what's the deal? But I feel I feel weird that you're here. We could have used you in the chat about 45 minutes ago. <laughs> That's funny. That's funny. All right, Joe, let's roll back in with some of these White Sox predictions. I'm antsy. Yeah, man. Um favorite. I have you looked at the new ballpark editions, by the way, the food. The stuff? food, I've only seen the ones that popped up on Twitter. All right, well, out of the ones you saw, best new ballpark food item at this at guaranteed rate. Um, I want to see a whole list of them. Best new ball or how do I find them? If you look up White Sox food offerings, it'll come up. Um, NBC Chicago <laughs> pops it right on the top. Okay. White Sox reveal. Let's see. Okay, right off the bat, we got a new spicy chicken sandwich or a crispy chicken sandwich. Yeah. Oh, they're they're making empanadas. Love that. Um, a Jack and Coke float. Interesting. Interesting. It's tricky though. Some of those are only in the stadium club. Um, oh. Or the club level, like like I got all excited that they had they announced a smash burger. You're gonna see that in a minute. It's oh, only, and it's only at Shy Sox Bar and Grill. No, I thought the. The smash burger. Is it the chai socks? I thought I said it was. Oh, 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 yeah. So this smokehouse smash burger, is that what you're thinking? Uh, I don't know. I was was the there a big burger. onion ring on it? South side smash burger. Yes. Yeah. This says club where, level. Okay. They have one called the smokehouse smash burger and it's on the shy socks bar and grill. Okay. Well, that's across the street. Yeah. Delicious. They have good I food mean, there all the time. I, I can have a smash burger anyway. And by the way, for those of our listeners watching, apparently, I think I think you knew this, Vin. It used to be owned by the folks that run Gibson's Steakhouse. Uh -huh. That is no longer the case. It is now operated by the Chicago White Sox. Oh, very good. So personally, I'm going to go and try it. But personally, for me, I feel like there's going to be a – maybe I'm just a being decline. facetious here. I feel like it's going to be a decline. Would it make sense? Or it would make sense. Because Gibson's is a top tier establishment. I certainly hope it's fantastic because I'm going to go no matter what. But Yeah. Um, I'm looking. The Chimichurri's back. I saw they, I think they may have moved it exclusively to the club level now. Oh, yeah. I didn't get to try it last year. You yep, tried it. That's in the club level. Yeah, I did try I had it twice. It was good. They have a bunch of good looking food in the club level now. But yeah, out of all these things that are new, um, the crispy chicken sandwich, the empanadas, um, they have impossible hot dogs and impossible burgers now at the yeah, grill that's stands. Yeah, intriguing to me. Yeah. I, I would never get one, but yeah, um, yeah. And then the smokehouse smash burger at Shy Sox Bar and Grill, very interesting, very interesting. So far, of all the things that are new, that smokehouse yeah, smash up. burger. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely, we'll get my hands on one of those. It's almost Cuban yeah. season, Joe. Um, it is. I could go for a nice Cubano. Yes. 
the mini Minoso. The, the Cuban Comet station. Yep. yep. So good. So, Love so it. good. Great call there. How about you? Uh, what was yours? Man, I say out of all the new ones, I think um, originally it was the Smash Burger, but when I found it was only in the club level, it kind of pissed me off. So I think I'm going to go with that crispy chicken sandwich because you can get it on the lower level. And mm-hmm. and who doesn't love a good crispy chicken sandwich? I mean, that's what we, we were kind of missing it in the ballpark. Now, now, if it sucks, then I'll be really mad. But I feel like you don't put a crispy chicken sandwich into your ballpark if you know it's going to suck. Yeah. yeah. Because and people you- have high standards for that. People have high standards for that, and people have high standards for just food at guaranteed rate field anyway. That's like, true. If you're not going to put a winner on the field, at least I can eat something good. you know. And it gets a, a spicy Creole sauce on there. You can sign me up. Yeah. And you can get it in section 140, 163, and 544. Yep. Although I've, I've heard rumblings from various sources. I don't know if this is true or not. If the upper deck is going to be completely closed for the opening series, maybe it was just soup. Maybe it's just... um for vendors and stuff and like for like some of the stands. But I, I had heard that they might not have any <laughs> operating uh, stands upstairs. I'm sure opening day will be the exception. And then the rest of that series, it would be, it wouldn't shock me. You could buy tickets for like $6 for yeah. every game. I'm probably going to go against Atlanta. Um, Cause for those of you who don't know, there's a pretty good chance that Chris Sale and Reynaldo Lopez each make their first start of the season um, against, the against the White Sox. First start in Braves uniforms against the White Sox. Um, kind of depends on how they shake it out lefty, righty. I know Reynaldo Lopez is their number five. but I think we'll it's see. so funny he's a starter again. Yeah. Well, that's what the Braves, one of the most dangerous organizations in all of baseball, think of Reynaldo Lopez. He's a starter for them. Um, somebody else got bumped out in favor of Reynaldo Lopez. I forget the guy's name. But, you know, good for him. I'm happy for him. But, yeah, those games sitting in the 500 level, you'll pay $6, and then they'll send you down to the, yeah. the lower level. Is Charlie so, Morton yeah. still playing for the Braves? I believe Charlie Morton is still on the Braves. Isn't yep. he like 40? Um, Charlie Morton. Yeah, he went five innings just a couple of days ago. He is 40 years old. Good for him, man. Yep. I remember I was in the tail end of my baseball draft the other day, and I was like, oh, should I take a try on him? I'm like, I looked, and I saw I was 40, and I was like, ah, I think I'll pass. Yeah, you were like, nay. <laughs> it was like the last round. Um, I got Gavin Lux in the last round. I felt pretty good about oh, that. Oh, nice. Nice. That's a good pickup if he stays healthy, for sure. Could be a good breakout candidate for the last yeah. pick in the draft. Absolutely. He's kind of one of those guys. He kind of reminds me of a couple of the stars on the White Sox. It's like, we've been waiting. We've yeah. been waiting for you. Like, let's go. Well, he might get a lot more playing time if Otani gets canned. Yeah, I don't think after today, Otani. I I was kind of worried for Otani's fate, but after the statements today and the kind of the positive, mostly positive reaction to it, I missed um, it. Do you want to give a brief synopsis for our listeners? He he went out there and gave a speech. He took no questions. Let me see if I could find some uh, some actual quotes. Shohei Otani. He went and met with the media. And yeah, this is the big quote that came out. I never bet on baseball or any other sports or have never asked somebody to do it on my behalf. I have never went through a bookmaker to bet on sports. And then he later said, um, let me see. It pay has been stealing money from my account and has told lies. So, so, and I I know this isn't conspiracy theory, South Burbs hit men, well, indulge me for a second, Vin, because I've seen you've seen the stuff that I've seen on the internet, right? You've seen people talking about this. Why is there any world where a bookie of this guy's level, and by the way, his house was routed, raided by the feds about a year ago, so they've had a lot of this information, would extend a line of credit that far to a guy who's just an interpreter that probably is only taking home maybe not even half a million a year? How do you let him go to that forty-five, whatever million range? I, it just seems a little fishy. Does, did Otani's um, did Otani's um, agent or not agent interpreter make more money than we realized? 
I mean, it's possible, but I, I, I don't think, think so. But I'm just I trying doubt to, it. I'm trying to answer your like come up with possible answers for your question. And they were buddies like growing up together, and then they were chummy chummy in the dugout the day that they fired him. Yeah, and they were laughing and having a good time. Yep. But then he tells everyone, and he changed his story a couple times, probably after his legal team got a hold of it, because originally he said he gave him the money. Remember? Yep. yep. And then then they said that he stole it. Yeah. It's just. I feel I feel like there's a lot more questions that are going to be asked. I think the MLB is going to get down to it, but I feel like the MLB has every reason to find a way to let this guy off, regardless of the situation. But if that's the case, then they have to put Pete Rose in the Hall of Fame. Yeah, well, I think Pete Rose should go in the Hall of Fame anyway. Um, I agree because he bet on himself. Um, if he bet against himself, like the White Sox in the teens, then it's a different story. Then you're losing games on purpose. But if you bet on yourself and then it makes you try extra hard, I, I, I get why it's wrong. I don't want anyone doing it, but I don't think it's 50 years worth of punishment worthy. Um, mm -hmm. At least for the first guy. If someone did it now, fine. If we've come to find out that Otani was betting on baseball, that's a big problem. I wouldn't be shocked if he's in big, big trouble. But if we come to find out that he was betting on Premier League soccer or college football, or whatever sport it might be that he likes, I would have zero issue with it. Like, none. Mm -hmm. Like, zero whatsoever. I would be shocked, like, to find out if guys didn't do that, to be honest with you, because they're, yeah. they're, they're dudes in their late 20s, early 30s, just like us. So, yeah, I don't know. I've gone off the deep end of, like, the conspiracy theories because the whole thing just doesn't add up to me. I think Otani is good for baseball. I just, man, the whole thing is so weird. It's so weird. The worst possible scenario for the MLB, by the way. It really is. They're like, it couldn't have been anybody else. Literally it's anybody. Like, Shohei Otani is arguably the greatest baseball player who ever lived. I mean, he's certainly the most talented. Yeah. Because he can pitch well. He's a top five pitcher and a top ten hitter. So you mish that together and you got the best player, I think, in my opinion. Do you think there's somewhere in Otani's head when he's going through all this stuff that he's like, man, I wish I didn't defer that contract? Yeah. Yeah, because that could really come back to bite him. But I, I, he's got such big endorsements from commercials in both the United States and Japan. You're not well, telling me that and this isn't going to affect that at all? No, I no, it, it, it might. It might. They start cutting him loose. The only thing is we only see guys get cut loose from stuff like that if it's like sexual abuse or domestic violence or stuff like like betting. If this investigation comes back. If I were DraftKings, I'd be begging to sign them tomorrow. <laughs> they probably already have made the call, I guarantee yeah. you. Um, and then he definitely said no. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He's like, what do you even mean? <laughs> He's like, get the get out of here. Yeah. Um but what I was going to say is if he gets anything comes back for him actually betting or anything, you know, those sponsorships are gone. That contract probably gets terminated. Yep. But it makes you wonder how much these, these teams know. Yes, it's absolutely true. It wouldn't shock. Like they got to, they, they're going to sweep it under the rug. If it's bad, like the bad, bad, like if it's the worst possible scenario, I don't think we ever find out about it. That's just my personal prediction, my personal opinion of what's going to happen. If I'm proven wrong, I'll be very disappointed because I do enjoy Shohei Otani very, very much. Um, he's been doesn't one of my Dodgers, favorites. Doesn't Dodgers ownership own another? Uh, you think Otani's going to pull a Jordan and go play basketball for a couple of years? And, uh, <laughs> Just kind of sweep it all under the rug. Um, <laughs> I'm going to play basketball. That's what my dad wanted me to do. Yeah. And, you know, if he – if let's say he got banned from MLB. Like, they, they dropped the true hammer on him, right? Like, the Pete Rose, the Joe Jackson type hammer. He'll just go to Japan and play for just as much money over there. Like, it's not really – what Trevor Bauer's doing, yeah. Yeah. It's not going to monetarily hurt him in any way, shape, or form. Um It'll just ruin his all-time baseball career. He'll, he'll not go down as the greatest baseball player who ever lived. He wouldn't go to the Hall of Fame. But I, I just don't see a way where stuff like that happens. I do think the memes are going to last for a long time. It's going to yeah. be similar to, like, the Astros. People still 
Photoshop Jose Altuve's face on the back of like a garbage truck or a garbage can. Um, you know, they still get booed to this day. The It'll memes never go about. Away. Yeah, I saw a meme about like when he was on the podium today giving his interview. He was like encouraging people to take Houston plus four and a half in their next game, like in the NCAA March Madness or whatever. And like, it is funny as guys who like to partake at the gambling here and there. It is funny, but um, he probably doesn't find it very funny at all. Um, no, I did see in their spring training lineup or whatever. I think it was just a picture that popped up from them in Japan. He was on deck and Mookie Betts was about to lead off and they were standing right next to each other and it said Otani Betts and the caption was, yep. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Love it. Very, very funny. Yeah. I'm, I'm not going to lie. I was going to take him in my draft eighth overall. Mm-hmm. But with, when this news broke, like the, the day of, I was like, I passed. I took Matt Olson instead. Where did he end up going? Uh, I think he went like, 10th okay i'm surprised he didn't fall farther than that i would have taken i i i have a hunch that the person who took him has not watched any baseball got it like understood like under doesn't understand what's going on right now that would make sense i mean to be fair it's probably still a great pick because i don't know if there's going to be anything that's going to come down this season interesting i just i just don't know man I, i i couldn't do it I was feeling it like in the moment. I'm just like, ah, I think Olsen's I, I mean Olsen's a great pick, let's be honest. Yeah, Olsen Olsen's a wonderful pick. It's funny. Um, I, I asked you before the draft, I'm like, would you take would you take Soto? my whole conundrum was like Soto versus Olsen, right? In the eighth spot. And then Soto went second overall. Yeah. So <laughs> I, I think that was the day I was like real sick, like real sick. You could probably still hear it a little bit. But um I would have told you Soto. And that's why I'm kind of glad he didn't get to you because I would have felt bad if that only because, and that's not to say Olsen's a bad pick. Like Soto went second. I, I, I kind of agree with that. I do think Soto is poorly ranked on all of the sites. Um, because of the bad spring. Yeah. Yeah. The mediocre spring new team, but, and you know, he wasn't great with the Padres when he first started, he kind of turned it on later on. So historically you could say Soto's not, the best when starting with a new team, but I don't know. I think from a pure overall talent standpoint and with judge right there in the lineup with them. And then, you know, maybe even Stanton has like a bounce back year offensively, not bounce back. Like in terms of home runs, he's probably going to mash if he's healthy, but I don't know. I, I like Soto's situation in New York. Um, we'll see if he stays long term. but um, he's just, if you ask me, before Otani came around, if you were to ask me who's the best player in the league, I probably would have said Soto. I'm not sure I would say that right now, but he's definitely in the team photo. I think I probably would rather have Judge as a hitter right now. But Acuna's got to be the best player in baseball, right? Acuna is up there because he brings like he was he the number one pick. Everything, by the way. yeah, yeah, that, that totally makes. Because with Acuna, you're getting home runs, you're getting RBIs, you're getting hella stolen bases, which is huge in fantasy baseball. If you have a guy like that, well, that's um, why Stephen Kwan's so valuable. Yes, he stole forty bags last year. Yes, yeah. People laughed at me when I took him up. I'm like, this guy stole forty bases last year. Yes, and it's with the new rules. With pickoffs and whatnot, it's it's hard to ignore. Yeah, block in the bag now. Yeah, yeah and you, you can only have three breakaways from the mound but on the third one you have to throw and if you don't get them it's a balk like base runners took advantage of that last year and i'm not taking anything away from acuna going oh, did he do uh did he do 40 70 or was it 40 80 whatever he did something crazy i saw acuna play in person last year it was awesome but i I really like what he does, so I do think it's a good number one overall pick. Um, I like him in the conversation for best player in the league too. Yeah, I mean, we got on a bit of a rant there, but hey, we're talking ball. Who cares? Yeah, that's what we're doing. It's what we're going to be doing. I mean, the White Sox are terrible, so like that's what we're going to be doing this year. We're going to talk. True. Ball. We're giving everyone a taste of what to expect. What yeah, to expect seriously, our White season. Sox tangents are going to lead into us talking about more interesting teams. Uh, we were we were doing White Sox predictions, and uh, we were talking about food, and then we got talking about Otani, which got talking about fantasy baseball, which got talking about rest of baseball. Bringing it back to the White Sox for a second, Vin. I know this is a, a strange, off the wall question, but who's 
who's who's an off, off the radar player that you think ends up on the White Sox by the end of the season? Do you have a name that's like out there on another team that you can see the White Sox acquiring via free agency, aka someone gets cut or um, someone that you can think they can get for cheap? Because there's a lot of guys that have been shown the door here during spring training. Not that there's anybody that amazing out there. Do they take a shot on a guy like Trevor Bauer? I doubt it. I would not because I would have signed Clevenger by now. If if your morals are just out the window and you don't care about having D-holes on your team, you can go get Clevenger too. Bring them both in. Um, I'm going to go out. This is not going to actually happen, but since we're just making fun, bold predictions. A yeah. good bold prediction is that they trade Luis Robert Jr. They get like Colton, Colton Kowser back from the Baltimore – Orioles. He's their number three overall prospect. He's currently listed at MLB level. He is an outfielder that bats left and throws right. A lot of Orioles fans like Kowser, from what I understand. I I too think that uh, Luis Robert will get traded as well. <laughs> uh, I do think in that trade you're going to have to acquire somebody really, really good. Yeah. I feel like I don't think there's any world where this happens, but like, let's say Robert is just a world beater for half a season, right? Jackson holiday. Do you think they would put him in a package? Probably not. I don't. I don't because I wouldn't like if I was an Orioles fan, I would only want them to trade Jackson Holiday if they're getting back one of the guys like we were just talking about, like one of the elite super players in the league. I mean, the O's have been good at developing talent lately. Um, they need to take that next step. One of two things is going to happen. They're going to take all their prospects that they've built around, and they're going to be like the Braves and win a World Series with that method, or they're going to be like the White Sox, and they're not going to spend a little extra money around the edges and – um, waste it. Um, one of those two things is going to happen for the O's. I wholeheartedly believe that. You know, they're better than the Twins, but can they reach that pinnacle of like what the Dodgers? The Dodgers are a different story. Everyone gets mad at the Dodgers because they spend all this money. Um, they actually spend all this money and develop players really well. They're like a mix of the Orioles and the Yankees. Somehow, I, I'm jealous. Like they have a top 10 farm system every year. Like they develop talent so well. They use some of it to trade for people when it's time to win, but then they replace those prospects with new ones and develop them well. Um, they had the players that Boston wanted to trade for Mookie Betts. They had players to give away for, you know, at the time when they traded for other people across the league. Um, you know, I'm, tr I'm kind of drawing a blank on any big trades the Dodgers made. They, they've made some huge trades. Um, you know. Glass now, right? Was it trade? Yeah, yeah. Great example. Getting Glass now. The guys that – you know, teams want prospects that teams want. The Dodgers have them available to them because their farm system is so strong and they put resources into it. And, you know, a lot of the times the Dodgers guys leave the Dodgers in free agency and yeah. they, they don't care. They'll, they'll go sign Freddie Freeman themselves. They'll trade for Mookie Betts. They'll sign Shohei Otani. Uh, they let Bellinger go. They let um, Manny Machado go. Um, you know, it happens all the time. So, We'll see what happens with that, but you know, getting a getting a top level prospect from a team like the O's for Luis Robert Jr. I'll say that is a bold prediction of a player that I can see coming to the White Sox this year. There you go. I think we both feel feel this trade's happening this year. A guy I wish they would have weighed the trade was Dylan Cease, but that ship has sailed, my friend. I, yeah. I drafted him in fantasy baseball. Having him in the Padres, that could be a nice little bounce back candidate, no doubt. I got him and Brandon Webb. Nice. Nice. It's a little one-two punch, you know? Absolutely. So, well, We got a question from Thomas that's actually a legit question. Uh, are the Sox actually going to get a new stadium and why? I thought Comiskey was pretty nice. It is. Guaranteed rate's a great stadium. Vinny and I love it. You know, I, let's be honest, Vin. I, I don't think this is a hot take, but the reason these conversations are happening – are because that there was a shooting in the ballpark last summer. I I don't think that there's – this wouldn't be a conversation if that didn't happen. Do you agree? Yeah, I do. And I also 
it, a shooting. I use that term lightly because a bullet grazed someone's leg, and we don't know how they or why. St- we still don't have anything, which is yeah, bizarre. Yeah, it is bizarre. Like it's not the type of shooting where it's like it wasn't an act of violence. At least we don't think. Um, whenever there's a gun and a bullet involved, of course that's dangerous. That's not sure, something sure. you want in a ballpark environment. But I, I don't think it's you know something that you know is scary like I, w- I went to the game the next day i wasn't worried so did i um i forget why we were both there we saw each other that's when we took that picture in front of that yeah, big it was a bobblehead thing. it was a bob it was a, it was a dylan c's bobblehead? bobblehead yes yes it was yeah. dylan c's bobblehead. <laughs> a lot of good that is for us now yeah seriously maybe he'll win his cy young finally go, now go san say. diego daddies yeah. um Papa. they the, are they gonna get a new stadium maybe it won't be for at least five years though I think, I, I think the answer is no. I think this is just they're just kicking the tires around. I think that like oh they have this land, there's they have these mock ups, whatever. You know who has to pay for that stadium, right? If it goes there, yeah, we do. If Jerry wants to pay for the land, by all means, Jerry, move them. There's no world where he does it without taxpayers or help from the state. So I think it's just all a big song and dance. He'll sell the squad. The ownership will come in. They'll make improvements at the current park. They'll keep it in historic Bridgeport across the street from old Comiskey Park. Just my two cents. Would it be great in the South Loop? Watching a game would be great. Nothing else would be great. The commute would suck. The parking would be outrageous. And the traffic would be a nightmare. That's all I have to say about it. I couldn't agree more. I mean, going to Bears game sucks. And it's not just because the stadium's trash. I actually think the White Sox new stadium wouldn't be trash. It wouldn't. Like, it would be nice. Going going to games in that area for the Chicago Bears, let's pretend Soldier Field is really nice. I would still say it sucks getting to the game. Soldier Field's still a dump. It's still, Soldier, Soldier Field's got double problems. It it's sucks the dumpiest and it's hard stadium to get in there. Chicago. Yeah, it sucks and it's hard to get there. If Wrigley the used to be sucks, the biggest dump until they cleaned it up. Yeah, Wrigley's awesome. Now it is. Sorry. I it used you know, to suck. You know how much I love pooing on them when the White Sox are good. But no, don't Wrigley's sleep on awesome. a bison dog either. Don't no, sleep. No, absolutely. I agree. I've had it. It's good. Um the soldier field, though, you do the White Sox think before you act, White Sox. Make sure if you do this, you do it right. Get parking. Make it accessible for people to get to. Um, if that, if those two things can't happen, then it's not going to work. It's not going to work well, I guess I should say. But a long story short, it maybe is my answer to Thomas Gage. But if yes, it's not for a long time. So in the short term, no. Yeah, I don't. I don't think it's going to happen. I mean, we'll see. Time will tell. But Thomas, thank you for the sincere question. I really appreciate it. Hundred percent. Love Thomas. And there's a lot of people tuned in right now. For you guys that are all tuned in, feel free to ask a question. Jump, chime in. What do you What do you feel about the White Sox 2024 chances? Do you think they're going to be as bad as we think they are? Do you think that they're going to win 100 games? You're nuts, but do you think it? Sure, maybe. I doubt it. Are you looking forward to anything in the ballpark? Is there a handout that has you excited? Yeah. Tell us. Let us know in the chat. Um, We're excited here. Zoom- yeah, Zim was hanging out for a little bit, talking about craps. If you're excited, or if you disagree with one of our baseball takes, let us know in a friendly manner. We're ready to debate. Maybe it's even not when it's when people get personal that it's like, I will own you. I just know some people wouldn't say it to either of our face when they call us hacks. Like, there's just no shot. There's just absolutely yeah. no shot. So, dumb, dumb people, but. Joe, was that it for the predictions that you had for the White Sox purposes? Yeah. What do you? What do you? Do you have anything else? You yeah. Add? Yeah. Before we leave, I do want to know if I know I'm kind of putting you on the spot. You'd have to pull up the list of teams in the MLB by division. But could you make your playoff predictions right now? Yeah, I could. I'll, I'll pull those up. Hang on. Because I would love to hear from your vantage point what you think is going to happen this year. Like, obviously, you'll pick a division winner from each team. 
So what I was thinking is we each pick a division winner from each team, our three wild card teams from each league, and then who you think is going to win the World Series over who. Obviously, most of this shit is going to be wrong. Most of our most of our playoff predictions will probably be pretty spot on. It's pretty obvious who's good, who's not. But I think our World Series predictions will probably be pretty trash. We couldn't even predict the World Series right entering the playoffs, let alone yeah. entering the season. I mean, that's okay. I mean, no one's expecting us to... I mean, even the experts can't get it right. Seriously. So, cut us some slack. <laughs> yeah. Uh, real quick, before before we get into the prediction stuff, I got one more, one more thing. Then we'll get into our playoff predictions. I meant to do this earlier, Vin. I totally spaced. But the White Sox did announce last week, right after we had Ryan Lee on the show. If you missed it, go back and check it out. He's the in-stadium host for your White Sox. It's a great interview. They announced more handouts. So, Vin, before we get to our playoff predictions, here are the rest of the handouts that they announced. Does anything here get you excited? Uh, there's like a Pantera Modelo bobble thing. Of course, the Frank Thomas double back-to-back MVP. There's some ugly jerseys. <laughs> anything stand out for you? I know it's considered ugly. I love that jersey on August 14th. I absolutely think it's so beautiful. I love like old, ugly throwback jerseys like that yeah, in ugly. both in both baseball and hockey. You got to wear a bucket hat with that one. Yeah, too. a bucket hat. It's that's like a darty jersey. I love it. I love it so much. I love the old school font. I love the ugly red uh, stripes. Oh yeah, I I want to be there on April or on August fourteenth. Dude, I love that man. Uh, I will say I really look forward to the. Frank Thomas back to back MVP bobblehead August thirty first, and then I'm trying to grab a photo of it because of course when we were talking to Ryan last week they didn't have the image for this item but they just finally released it the day before we go to Harry Potter night Vin they are having Southpaw WWE giveaway figure of Southpaw with a WWE um, belt. It's so sick. I, I have a photo of it, which I am uploading as we speak. I, I of course, cannot go back-to-back days, Vin. Um, so I'll probably have to figure something out. But it'll probably be an eBay acquisition. or Maybe somebody. me and you could work something out. The Frank, what, what's the day before? The 9th. And, but what's the giveaway? It's WWE Southpaw. It's right here. It's really sick. Yeah. You said <laughs> you can't go back-to-back days, though. I probably can't, no. But what, what day are you going to? Harry Potter. Oh, a... okay, okay. That's all right. I just think that's really cool um, because, it, first off, it's not a player that's going to get traded. Southpaw's not going anywhere. No, no, uh, no. <laughs> and secondly, it's it's just silly. So, anyway, I'm excited for that on May 9th. So, exciting stuff. Pull, while we while I look up the, the, the divisions, why don't you, Vin, give us your – playoff predictions okay so well i'll start in the national league since we're an american league mostly show um in the nl east i believe that my favorite nl team if i were to start a podcast about an nl team it'd be about these guys i would pick the atlanta braves shock i think the braves are going to win the nl east i have a family that used to live in atlanta been there a couple times love it love the braves they're my second favorite team Maybe third favorite, depending on where I put Boston on that particular year. But um, in the NL Central, I think the Cubs are going to win the NL Central. I absolutely do. And my logic is because St. Louis kind of stinks. Pittsburgh kind of stinks. I think Milwaukee's taking a big step back. The fact that some bookies, some sites have the Milwaukee Brewers ahead of the Cubs in terms of value to win the World Series is crazy to me. Mm-hmm. Um, I I, I think the Cubs, are, a future on them has got good value, um, especially yeah. to win the division. Um, the Reds, I think, will be trouble for the Cubs. I think that's the team that presents them the most challenge and keeps them from winning it by 20 games. Yeah, that's cool. um, um, so, but yeah, I think the Cubs are the team that wins the NL Central. In the NL West, I mean, it's the Dodgers. They basically buy a division title. And then what happens in the playoffs happens in the playoffs. Um, they did get one in 2020. That you could get one any random year when your team's that good in the regular season year mm-hmm. after year. And then my at-large wild card teams. Um, I'm gonna pick. 
I'm going to pick the defending National League champion Arizona Diamondbacks to get back into the playoffs. Um, I think they have a chance to do it. Um, like I'm going to pick them to squeak in. I believe the Philadelphia Phillies will be a wild card team coming out of the NL East. And then, Joe, my third team, I've been going back and forth between two other NL West teams and one NL Central team. I think the Giants, the Do- or the Padres, and the Reds are three teams that battle for that last wild card spot. And I believe that the San Diego Padres are going to shock the world a little bit and be the team that comes out in that last wild card. I believe that. So they got a good squad. Yeah. And the giants and reds will be respectable. They'll be, and Miami will probably be pretty respectable too um, with our buddy, Jake Berger. And then of course, Tim Anderson going there as well. But yeah, the, the, the six playoff teams that I have, the Atlanta Braves, the Chicago Cubs, the Los Angeles Dodgers, the San Diego Padres, um, the Arizona Diamondbacks, and the Philadelphia Phillies. That's the National League. And then roll it on over to the American League. Or would you like to do National League first? No, go ahead. And for the American League, in the American League West, I, yeah, I think the Houston Astros are going to win the West. Um They've won it a lot in the last decade, and I really don't see a reason why they're not going to this year. Um, I believe that I'm back and forth on the Central all season long. My co-host on Bar Down, Frank Mueller, we're going to go through his baseball predictions on Wednesday. I know it's a hockey show, but we talk about every sport. You should tune in if you're interested in hearing a wildly hot take for who's going to win the Central. I know his. I'm not going to say it. But his is wild. Um, I'm gonna. I, the Twins are gonna repeat as division champion again. I think. Um, I just think they got what they need in order to take care of business in their division. Once the playoffs come around, it's a different story. But it's a brutal division, and I think the Twins are just probably gonna luck into winning it once again. Um, the AL East. I think this is the year that the Toronto Blue Jays rise above. Um, Vlad Jr. had a down year last year, and it's the best division in baseball. Um, The Red Sox came in last place last year, and they were still like a respectable, pretty good team. Um, But yeah, I got the Toronto Blue Jays winning the AL East. Um, That's my like shocker. Like I don't want to pick chalk and just last year's winners for all of them. So I figured I'd roll the dice a little bit on that one and pick Toronto to be the division winner there. Uh, My wild card teams are obviously the defending World Series champion Texas Rangers in the West. Um, I could see them going farther than the Astros in the playoffs. I just think over 162, I like what the Astros bring to the table a little more in terms of that. Hell yeah. But, um, yeah, I got them going in. Um, I think the Baltimore Orioles will be neck and neck with Toronto all season long um, and be that team that comes out of the wild card. And maybe they even have a better record than, say, the Twins who win the Central. Um, maybe even the Astros who win the West. Like I think Baltimore and Toronto are both going to be that good. Um, and then I'm going to pick as my wild card team. I was going to pick the Yankees because I love Judge. I love Soto. I think their lineup's going to mash. But without Garrett Cole for the first handful of months, and it could That's be longer. Rough. It could be longer. Like, do I trust um, Carlos Rodon and? Uh, Nestor Cortez, like guys like that, to just be the anchor. Like in the are they going to resign Montgomery or what? Yeah, they they could bring in Montgomery. That would give them a big boost for sure. Um, but I'm I'm not sure. I was going to pick the Yankees, but I'm actually going to be a little surprising. I think Seattle Mariners bounce back, and they end up getting in the playoffs. Um, they'll be a fun team this year. I think Julio will have a big year. They got rid of Robbie Ray. Um. I really like what they have with their other pitching, though, and their lineup can mash. They had a better record than the Twins last year, but the Twins won the Central. The Mariners missed the playoffs in the wild card. Um, I think the Mariners are going to get it done this year and edge out the Yankees for the final spot. So my playoffs are the Houston Astros, Texas Rangers, Seattle Mariners, Minnesota Twins, Toronto Blue Jays, and Baltimore Orioles. Wow. And then I'll do my World Series prediction with you after you give your. All right, prediction. fair enough. So, so there's division winners and how many wild card spots? Three. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So I'll start with the AL since you just finished the AL. 
uh, heading to the east. I I feel like the Baltimore Orioles are going to win that division. I don't know why. I just I just like that young team. They're fun to root for, so I'm going to pick them to win that division. The Central, I don't think it's particularly close. I think the Twins will take that division away. They have the best pitching. Um, Carlos Correa is having a nice spring. Perhaps he could put together a full year. I don't know. We'll see. If he's healthy, they say he's healthy. I'll believe it when I see it. But either way, should be the team to beat in this division. The West, I mean, let's be honest. I don't think anyone's taken – I mean, the Rangers are, are a great team. I, I I just – I see Houston taking that division. They're just so good. I'm going to make my picks a lot just quicker than yours since, I mean, I'm – we had a lot to talk about still. So, yeah. <laughs> um, so those are my division winners um, going to wild card spots. You said we got three of them. This may be a hot take, but I think there's two teams coming out of the American League East, and I think that's the Toronto Blue Jays and the New York Yankees. Okay, in the wild card spots. Nice, both of those nice. teams. Both of those teams make the playoffs, and that leaves one more spot. I'm looking at all these teams here, Vin, and it's like you look at it, and there's just one name here that stands out. I feel like the Seattle Mariners take that other spot. And you had so, what team winning the West, excuse me? Uh, the West, I have going to the Astros. Okay, so you have the defending World Series champion Texas Rangers missing the playoffs. Yes, I do. Nice. It happens. It happens all the time. It's not a weird thing. It happens a lot. That division's so good. Yes. I just – couldn't agree more. I mean, I will. I mean, but the first three teams, of course, the Astros, Rangers, Mariners are good. The A's stink, but the Angels. I think the Angels are bad, but I think they're better than than people think they're going to be. I, I mean, I don't. They're better than the White Sox. It's not saying a lot, but yes. So anyway, those are my teams, my playoff teams for the American League, uh, going into the NL. Uh, I agree with Vinny. There's no one beating the Dodgers in the West, in that division, anyway. Coming to the Central, I think it's the Cubs division. They're by far the most superior team. Although the Reds are close behind at the heels, so we'll talk about them here in a bit. <laughs> uh, the East, I'm with you, Vin. I think the Atlanta Braves win that division, and it's not particularly close. So then it leaves me with, with three wild card spots. Uh, I love the Cincinnati Reds. I think they get a playoff spot this year. They have a young squad. L.A.D. La Cruz is one of the most exciting players in all of baseball. So I think they get in. Uh, going into the National League East, I believe, alongside Vinny, the Philadelphia Phillies take a wild card spot. And then the last playoff spot, for me, the last wild card spot goes to the Padres in the West. I think they are going to be one of the best teams in baseball. And if they were in any other division, they'd probably win <laughs> their division. But I think they're going to be at a, a wild card spot. So those are my playoff teams, Vince. So to recap, we got Braves, Cubs, Dodgers, Padres, Reds, and Phillies. Very good, Joe. Uh, that's what I hope the playoffs are in the National League. Absolutely. That would be fun. That would be so fun. I love that, actually. Um all right, really quick, who do you think is going to win the World Series over who? Oh, that's an impossible question. Yeah. <laughs> but it might as well put me on the spot. It's all good. Um, call me crazy. I don't think the Dodgers make it to the World Series, especially with all this distraction. So I'm going to take the San Diego Padres in the World Series facing off. People are going to hate me for this. San Diego Padres in the World Series against the New York Yankees. Okay. And like the winner that. of the World Series is the Padres. Wow. Padres over the Yankees. It's a hot take. I'm going to give a it's hot a, take, too. It's assuming that the Yankees get hot, which I feel like they will. But as long as they get that hot streak, I think they get there. I'm going to give a hot take, too. I love it. Let me see. I like this team. Um, obviously, I'm going to probably feel like an idiot by May. Um, but I think in the National League, I think the Phillies find their way back. Man, that would be cool. I, the World I, Series. Like, I like Bryce Harper. 
I yeah, know not, a lot Harper, of people don't like him, but I do. Yeah, Bryce Harper's amazing. People who don't like Bryce Harper are just – they hate fun. Um, I don't hate fun. I love fun. So go Bryce Harper. Um, I think they get back to the World Series, but I have a feeling that they lose. I have this odd feeling that the Stanley Cup returns to Canada for the first time. Are you saying it's going to Vancouver? I think Vancouver's has a chance. Edmonton has a chance. Toronto's real good. Um, yeah, I think the Stanley Cup's returning to ca- uh, Canada this year for the first time in a couple decades. Um, why not the World Series, too? Um, the last time oh, yeah. the Stanley Cup went to Canada, the Blue Jays won the World Series. So, so you think it's going to Tor- Toronto, eh? I think the Toronto Blue Jays beat the... Um, Philadelphia Phillies in the World Series. I mean, that'd be cool. Yeah, we each picked a team from the AL to make it to the World Series that the other left out of the playoffs entirely. <laughs> I mean, I know it's a hot take thing that the Yankees get to the World Series. No, not minute. at all. It's the Yankees. I just feel like they're putting the pieces together. I, the only thing is that worries me is Garrett, Garrett, Garrett Cole. Yeah. That's very, now this that's is all. Cool. If he if he comes if if he doesn't come back, then my prediction changes. But I feel like they're being extra cautious with him right now, so that he can come back. Mm-hmm. So yeah, I that don't makes know. sense. That makes if sense. If he doesn't come back, they're in a world of hurt. Yes, like probably longer than this year. Because how does he return at his age from time? Like maybe maybe amazing, but you never truly know. You never true. Has there been any further updates other than they're just I, I just heard it was inflammation. Yeah, I think two to three months was the timeline. He's avoiding Tommy at this point, is what I've heard. So we'll see how long that lasts, though. Because you gotta wonder if it's looming. Yeah, and I think all this Soto talk is all nonsense. The guy's gonna be fine. Yeah, oh yeah. No doubt in my mind about that. But yeah, that's my series. So so let's get your world series. The we never mind. You gave me you just gave me yeah. the world series. But. Toronto over Philly. Philly. They can't play each other in the Stanley Cup final, but they could play each other in the playoffs. It's unlikely, but they could play each other in the playoffs. I love it, dude. So yep. Hot all takes right, around. What else we, talk, we got? We talked all kinds of White Sox. We got the pressing White Sox talk out of the way. We talked about the pressing people in the chat. Yep. We All talked right. about Star Wars. We talked about craps, Las Vegas, hockey. We came back, baseball. We talked all things Otani. I mean, we had a, we covered a, covered a gamut here, Van. We had some good talk tonight. Sure did. And listen, I love people who watch the show. Like Absolutely. with my whole heart. With my whole heart. I posted about it on Facebook before today. These, these podcasts are my babies. I We work hard on them. Um, very few people know you are one of them though, that know how much goes into it and how much time and thought away from the camera goes into it. But sure. you know, every now and then you get rattled bad it takes it to a personal level, but that won't happen again. I can promise you that for sure. And usually I can, I can kick people, but because he was a Twitter user, I cannot. So I learned something new today, Vin. Very interesting. But that also means nobody could see him because he's irrelevant. That that is also true. <laughs> so if you go to YouTube, those comments don't show up. Yeah, exactly. And I feel is it true most people are on YouTube and Facebook anyway? It's an even it's an even kill, you know. But no I one's hope- no one's nobody sees his comments on Twitter. So Twitter Twitter was exploding tonight though, from what I was looking like. I mean, we we still have a ton of people tuned in right now. Oh yeah? We talk like, like six million people. Yeah, there's six million people watching. Fuck yeah. <laughs> yeah. Drop the F bomb on the show because there's so many people watching. No, there's there's not six million people watching, but you know, we'll we'll go with like two million. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> nice. We tried to make this like just be a family show permanently, and then over the course of the White Sox getting bad. I would drop an F bomb periodically, you know. Yeah, it, is it happens. It happens. Just like every ki- every parent in their when their kids around every once in a while it slips up. So. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It's still, it's still proof for all audiences. Yes, <laughs> yes, for the most part. 
Yeah, I uh, what did I say the other day? Oh no, uh, no, <laughs> <laughs> no, it was funny. Um, I said like, like I said like, holy smokes, and, and it wasn't a swear, but I know it'll be anything that my daughter will repeat. I said, holy smokes, and all of a sudden she looked, turned around, she goes, holy guacamole. <laughs> That's comedy. That is comedy. Yeah, I'm. That's the one part about like being a dad. I'm worried about because I just let it fly. Sometimes. No, you won't. You won't. I. I You'll learn I, to keep I, it in check. I think so because like I don't. I'm good with like elderly people, and I like to think I'm good. Like I try my best to be extra good around like Katie's family and whatnot. Like, I, but I think sometimes when I like let my hair down, I really let it fly, yeah, and no. I gotta make sure because. You know, You'll learn with kids it like is at home and like where you're supposed to be able to let your hair down. But man, that's going to be, and you'll just, you'll just learn to adapt. Uh, the kids are so funny, dude. That's the thing. That's the best part. Like, you know, we would always joke, like when we change her, it's like, Oh, you got stinky toots, you know? <laughs> and, and then, and now every morning I, I change her. I say, Hey, morning, honey, let's go change you. She goes, daddy has stinky toots. <laughs> <laughs> She goes, you stinky toots. That's yeah. funny. Stinky I'm like, I know. That's yeah. going to be your new nickname on South Burbs Hitman. Welcome, Joe Mandel, also <laughs> known as Stinky Toots. Daddy Stinky Toots? <laughs> the Daddy Stinky Toot Toot Train. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But uh, anyway, it's 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 gold, and it's it's the best. Wouldn't trade it for anything, dude. Love that. Love that. So, Joe, what do we got to close out the show? Well, we can tell our listeners uh, there's a lot of great content on the Barroom Network this week. Greg Gabriel, uh, they had on Jared Payton, I believe it was today. Jared Payton, I, think, I, I th- just, I thought it was t- Thursday. Maybe it's still coming up. Uh, I think you're right. It's it's Tuesday, Tuesday morning, tomorrow, it's tomorrow, tomorrow, tomorrow morning. morning. Payton, All right. Jared Payton, also he's from the Chicago Sun Times. Um, no, yeah, of course, Walter Payton's son. Yeah. Does he have something to do with the Chicago Sun-Times? I don't know what Jared Payton's up to these days, but that wouldn't surprise me. I just assumed because it was Payton's son. He's SPN. Chicago football royalty, so but we'll just yeah. go. Yeah. So anyway, it's going to be a great show. Make sure you tune in. Of course, there's great content all throughout the week on the Barroom Network. You got draft coverage all the time. You got Dan and Aldo. I mean, there's just so much stuff. And then reminding our listeners and viewers of this show specifically – Next Monday, as we talked about on the show for many t- a lot, I'll, I will not be here. I'll be in Las Vegas. So we'll be doing our post season. I'm sorry, our, our post week one show on Saturday of next this upcoming week uh, before the Easter holiday. For those of you that celebrate, uh, Vin won't be able to make that one. He's got some stuff going on, but it'll be Zim and I just breaking down week one of the season. It won't be a two hour show. I promise you that but it'll just be something to, to make sure we have a show that week. And then we'll be back on Mondays from that point forward. Um, by the way, Vin, we didn't even talk about this real quick opening day. Sox winner, Sox loser. What do you think? No, oh, they'll lose. Okay. Yeah. I couldn't get that out of my mouth fast enough when you asked. That. No, and that, not at all. There was a deadpan to the camera. It was curb your enthusiasm. No, they'll lose. I don't know. I feel I want to agree with you, but I'm going to be the optimistic one. And we have to have alternating opinions anyway. I, I say the Sox are going to win it. Let's go nine to seven. Everything does fly on opening day. That is true. Every team is good on opening day. Sox have won a lot of opening days and the team was really crappy. They did. Big game James really loved showing up on opening day. Basically won the Fernando. That was it. That's the only day. Yeah, it's the only day he showed up. Yep. So I'm gonna take I'm gonna take an opening day victory for the White Sox. All right. I hope you're right. How bad did they lose to you? Um, Garrett Crochet out by the third inning. He'll give up nothing, but the relievers will come in. Sox will lose. Eloy will hit a home run, get fans all nice and excited. I'll, I'll go six to two. I like it, dude. Dude, 
Detroit's not that good. No. They're not that bad, though. Yeah. There are people around me that think they win their division. Well, I'm not saying that they're – I mean, they can certainly overperform. I don't agree. Just saying. I still think that the White Sox find a way to win on opening day. I don't think they'll be the better team all season long, but I think they find a way to win somehow, some way. It'll be all those Italian beefs and hot dogs, you know. I hope so, in series number two. Yes. yes they okay, do. okay. I, I agree with you there. I I mean I, I would love to see him take one, but I doubt it. I don't know that. I mean they they could get all win against the Braves. I, I am not necessarily predicting a sweep in that. Watch series, they, sweep, they sweep the Braves. If they sweep the Braves, then people are going to start thinking they're good. Like what? How did that happen? If they get one, if they get if they get two against the Tigers and then sweep the Braves, they're four and two or five and one. Then people are like. Can you imagine if they don't lose a game until I get back from Vegas? <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't. I promise you I will not be placing a wager on them while I'm in Vegas unless they are getting like five runs. Yeah, yeah. Which I doubt they will. That makes sense. Very good, Joe. Anyway, it's been a hell of a show, man. Had a lot of fun talking White Sox predictions. A huge thanks to Steven Zim Zimmerman for sending in his video, even though he couldn't make it on tonight. Uh, then I always appreciate talking ball with you. Uh, love, just love being on the air with you, having fun. It's all that matters, man. I don't even care about the people out there watching. I'm that, that sounds incredibly wrong. I, I'm not saying I don't care about the people that are, are tuning in and watching us. The negative, what I'm saying, folks. the people who, what I'm saying is, I don't mind, I don't care about the negative people. And I just, at the end of the day, I just forget sometimes that we're on camera, uh, talking ball and just, I'm just talking with you and having fun. So, that's the most fun of it all. I uh, also want to give a shout out to the chat room for being the positive folks that were in there supporting us. We appreciate that. And and even if you weren't supporting us and somehow you stuck around for an hour and a half, thanks for giving us an hour and a half of, of you, I guess. Um, <laughs> otherwise, got to thank Aldo Gandia, the, the barkeeper, for giving us this platform. Really appreciate him. And now we're up to our highest viewer count of the night, right when we're wrapping things up, which is crazy to me. But appreciate you guys hanging out with us. It's been a lot of fun. Baseball is three days away, guys. Less than that now, so I can't wait. So, And shout-outs for me. I always give a shout-out to my beautiful wife, Catherine. I love you very much. Uh, my two-year-old daughter, Audrey, you're just incredible and funny and adorable, and I love you. And my great Dane Maverick, who's right outside the door. Um, and is going to knock me off the bed tonight and give me a corner to sleep on. Um, so I love you, buddy. Vincenzo, what do you got for shout outs, man? My shout outs go out to my girlfriend, Katie, who I love very much. Thank you. Another season, South Burbs Hitman, giving up your Monday nights, hanging out with your favorite person. Um, you know, my brother Joey and his girlfriend Sarah, that's where I am right now. Big party for the Bachelor finale going on on the other side of the wall. And I'm in here doing South Burbs Hitman, which just exactly where I want to be. Um, I, I was going to stay home and they were like, no, come, come and do the show from the bedroom. So that's where I'm at right now, hanging out with my favorite people. And then of course my mom and dad wouldn't be anywhere without you guys. That's always my shout outs early in the season. So I can make sure everybody knows who actually means the most to me. And then of course, Joe, you and Zim as well. And Aldo, my great trio here at the Barroom network uh, on the baseball side of things, Frank Mueller sure. as well on the hockey side of things, you guys all rock and, we work well together, and I love it very much. I love it too, man. Um, I think that's hilarious. You're at a bachelor party right now. No pun intended. Yeah, yeah. A bachelor party. Comedy. <laughs> There's no Chippendales dancers at this bachelor party. Actually, no, I totally screwed no. that up. There's no strippers at this bachelor party. I mean, I guess there could be Chippendales dancers, depending on what kind of <laughs> bachelor party you're at. But That's funny. A party for the TV show The Bachelor. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know that show was still on the air, but I guess I'm not surprised. It's probably as big as it's ever been from what I – it's number one trending on Twitter right now. I don't even know who won. I was trying to, like, see while you were, um, you know, giving your shout-outs. And not that I don't pay attention to your shout-outs. Of course I do. But you know what I mean. I want to know who won, and I can't figure it out. So that will be the first thing I find out when the I – The answer is walls. nobody. nobody wins. Nobody yeah. ever wins. Everyone loses, or everyone wins, depending on how you look at it. 
we're just going off the deep end. It's been a hell of a show. Vin, I appreciate you, man, as always. Love talking ball with you. Absolutely. Thanks to everyone that tuned in tonight. And the viewership just keeps going up. I, I'm I thank everyone for tuning in. This is bonkers. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank we you will, for turning us into a smashing hit. We will keep this going all season long. If you're tuning in for the first time, just keep coming back. We'll be talking ball all off season long. And and as the White Sox get worse and worse, the show will just get better and better. Yes. Honestly. <laughs> Because we won't be depressing. <laughs> like the latter, the middle half towards like the all-star break last year, we were just all sad puppies. And uh, finally we decided, we're just like, you know what? Let's just wing it every week. That's, Sometimes those are the best shows, man. That's kind of going to be what it's like when the team is this bad. So I'm looking forward to it. A little Star Wars tangent that we went on, all the other yeah. stuff. It's great. It's truly great. It's a thing of beauty. But uh, again, yeah. we thank you for the South Burbs Hitmen. I'm Joe Mandel. That's Vinny Parisi. And uh, the, the the guy with the video earlier on was Steven Zim Zimmerman, of course, our other White Sox brother in arms. We appreciate him in the video. Uh, we will be back this upcoming Saturday, normal time. And that would be 8 p.m. Central, 9 p.m. East to talk opening week. Until then, we're back. Baseball's back. Let's go, White Sox. And until we see you, Let's just let's go White Sox. That, go that was Sox. a terrible hospital. See you later. Bye.